Ackerman here on ArmadaFC.com. My pleasure to be joined now by the new head coach of the Armada FC, Tony Miola. Welcome to Jacksonville. Thank you. Uh, it's been an exciting uh, couple days and I and, uh, got in last night and I say everyone's been so uh, welcoming and, and uh, it's been great. And I promised them all in a week I'll get all their names <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, I'm excited uh, about the opportunity. You know, there, uh, th there is a name associated with any of your teammates from that 94 U.S. national team, I think especially the World Cup team here in the United States. So many of uh, your teammates and yourself have stayed around the sport and made an impact. Uh, what's been, you know, why is that driven so many of your uh, teammates and yourself as far as sticking around you know, with soccer? Well, I think that the 90 and 94 groups both uh, had a clear understanding that you essentially had two jobs, right? The, the first one was to play soccer and the second one was to promote the game. And I think all those guys, you go back to whether it's, uh, I talked to Paul Caligiuri yesterday who was part of that group, John Harks, Tab Ramos, Eric Winalda, I mean the list goes on, Alexi Lalas, Balboa, they've all been involved in the game because we all understood that um, we all had a we all have a vision of where we want the game to go, where we want the game to be, and um, you know, we, as much as we've grown, it, it can continue to grow, and it's because of guys like that. And, and the expectation now is that you know the Landon Donovans of the world and Brian McBrides and the, the guys that came maybe a little bit after us um, take the same responsibility with the game, and they have, and, and that's the only way it, it continues to grow because eventually. You know, and if it hasn't already started, no one, no one will, will remember me, and eventually they won't remember Landon, but they will remember the next guy, right? And um, I learned from Walter Barr, uh, who was on the, the 1950 team. He used to be our liaison, and he had a, a little trite saying all the time, and he, he used to come in every day and say, let's just keep the ball rolling, right? And, and the message was, let's continue to build. And... Um, he was such a great, and he is such a great ambassador for the game, and I think we all kind of took that to heart, and that's probably why you see everybody involved. To a very similar extent, second year for the Armada in Jacksonville, keeping it rolling is important, but you, I know you have a vision for what you want to see uh, happen on the field. Talk about where you see things going here with the Armada. Well, I mean, the first vision for every coach, right, it doesn't matter if you're a youth coach or a college coach, uh, you, you want to win a championship. I mean, that's goal number one. Uh, but the first thing, and it's a, a message I'll send out to the guys today uh, via email because that's the, the, the easiest way to get to them, is they have to come here ready to compete. Uh, a couple things stick out to me last year. The fact that they've won, they won games at home shows me that, that they can win games. The fact that they didn't win on the road shows me that maybe we just need uh, a, a different mentality uh, when we when we go about things. And I'm not one. Uh, I, I I can't see myself. I'm I'm cut from, for lack of any other uh, a better description. And and I think it's a good one. I'm cut from Bruce Arena's mold, right? I I was with him from college on. He recruited me in high school and is that we don't really have to change for anybody, right? We, we, we are who we are, uh, and that's uh, uh, the, the type of player that I want to bring in are, are guys that are leaders, that understand. Um, to me, it's important when we look at guys, did they win a championship someplace? Uh, have they won championships along the way? Uh, because it means a lot. And now as, as a head coach, uh, just the, the same way I was when I was a player, um, I can't think of anything else other than winning a championship. It's the only only mentality I have. And if you're involved in professional sports, that has to be your ultimate goal, is to put a trophy in the case. And and I'm not making a promise that we're winning a championship this year because that would be foolish. But you have to have that mentality, and I have to have players with that mentality as well. And and you know, uh, sure, players talk. Uh, always about winning a championship and organizations talk about it but you have to do things to achieve that and with regards to uh, Mark and the vision of the club it's clear and, and you would know better than I because you've been here from day one um, that this club uh, has a clear vision that they want to do things right and that is really the uh, perception of this club as I did research over the last four or five weeks uh, about what I was getting into and that's important to know. And I, I told Mark right from, I, I think, conversation number one that I wanted to build a culture within the club that players want to come here and they never want to leave. 
right, and that players from the outside, even though we might not get them, uh, this is a place they think about coming, and that's important to me. So. Uh, they'll compete and uh, they'll be accountable for everything that they do. Just like I'll compete and I will be accountable for everything I do. Have you gotten to the point where you think about tactical approaches? You know, what what you want? To, you know, what kind of approach? What kind of uh, shape you want things to look like? Sure. For the last uh, three years, I, I put together my sort of dossier, for lack of a better term, of how I want to be as a coach. I've been doing this for three years. I shared that with Mark. Um, I'm an, I, I was a goalkeeper my entire life, but I'm an attacking coach. All, all my teams have attacked. Uh, it's easy to say, though. You have to have the players to do it. Um, I want to play in there. I, I, we were talking earlier this morning uh, about stats, and we have this system that we can track certain things. And um, I said I want to track how much the ball is in the opponent's end of the field more than anything, right? Because And, and as I got older, that became important to me because – as I got older in goal, I almost I played till I was 40. The longer the ball was in the other end of the field, the happier I was <laughs> because I didn't have to do much work. Um, and that really is the approach. Let's play in their end of the field. Uh, there's different ways to do it uh, during a game, and it presents different things. There's times when you attack with three passes. There's times when you attack with 15 passes. And a lot of that is dictated by what the other team does, obviously, conditions, and so many different things. But in, in a nutshell is to play in the opponent's half of the field as much as possible. You know, one of the big things about coming into a new league is understanding the other teams in the league, the other coaches, the other players. You've done some broadcasting of this league, by and large in the North American Soccer League. Can you pick out a style or a type that you expect to see when you face this team, when you face that team? Is that something that you have a, have a step on? Yeah, so I covered all but, I think I counted the other, all but four of the teams. Um, that are in the league and you can look at the Cosmos as the first example now things will change a little bit because they've got some guys that now have retired uh, but their their uh, ball possession team straightforward no frills it's not a it's not a uh, it's not like a Fort Lauderdale team where you'll see a little bit more movement in the middle of the field and you might get a trick here or there or a flick ball on because that's just kind of the mentality of Brazilian players um, and everyone does it in a different way I would say that I'm, my, my model, if anything, is a little bit closer to what the Cosmos try and do, uh, put you under pressure all the time. And, uh, but yeah, I, there's, there's definite styles in the league, there's no doubt about it. And quite honestly, the, the, the teams, you look at Ottawa and what they did, their style took a little bit longer to develop this season. And, and when it did, it got them to where they wanted to be, where they could compete with everyone. They were just a very difficult team to break down. Uh, they had good leaders in that group. They had a, a Heinemann up top who scored goals, uh, so they had a very distinct style, and it was very, it was, it was direct in a lot of ways. But more importantly, uh, they didn't give up a lot of goals to get there, and they were very difficult to break down. The teams that didn't have a style uh, that was consistent throughout didn't find much success. But, but we can say that about every league in the world. Yeah. You know, one of the other important parts of this, of course, you talk about connecting with the community, connecting with the fans. I know there are probably a lot of Section 904 members out there and season ticket owners who are out there right now. Uh, what do you do to connect with, with fans and connect with, with people? Obviously, you win. They love it. But what else can you do? Well, first, I, I, I should say that the, the guys that are here, that have been here in the off season, have done an exceptional job. I've been following on social media, and I get the reports, and, and they've been out in the community uh, full force, and they've been on the phones. and. Um, so, so credit to them uh, because I'm sure there's other things during the day that they may have wanted to do, uh, but they, they, they have been exceptional. That, that will continue, obviously, uh, but yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head, right? Everyone's happy when you win and you build a winner. And, um, but I think more importantly, these days, soccer fans um, are a heck of a lot smarter now than they were 20 years ago, 25 years ago when I started. Um, just because we have so much to, to see and view on, on television. And um, I think if they see that you're building something, they're okay with it. Um, if they don't see a direction, I think that's where fans kind of uh, shut down a little bit. And uh, hopefully they'll see from the beginning um, that the guys will come and compete. And um, ultimately, the, like I said, the, the, the goal is to win games. Tony, thanks so much, and welcome to Jacksonville. Thanks. It's a, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. I, I understand it's a challenge, and the next couple of weeks will be important uh, for the organization to, to bring some players in, but um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and, and I think the, the, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of possibility here in Jacksonville that as, as good as we've done so far, uh, we can still tap into. 
Tony Miola, the new coach of the Jacksonville Armada FC. Thanks so much for watching right here on armadafc.com.